listening to Nichols Live, and I am Larry Nichols, and more music is playing there for a second, but we got rid of it. I am Larry Nichols, and today's program, folks, I want you all to listen in and listen tight. I do not want anybody calling in, if you don't mind, until I'm ready to take calls. Part of what we're going to do today is very important to me. I hope it is to you. First off, let me say this. If you know somebody that you'd like to listen to the program, have them go and call in on 401. Um, Done. 401-283-6754. That is 401-283-6754. And then when they get there, press 1. They can also go to leadingedgeradio.com. And if you want to call in, when it is time to call in, it is 501-499-6022. area code 501. If you want to text me a comment, it's 440-897-0611. Now, today's program, bear with me, please. Bear with me, because today is a day when we are going to have to make a decision as an army, as a group. I just got word from Greg at Leading Edge Radio. We're just shy of 7,400 souls listening in right now, right now. Now, I have asked Carol Chapline call in and she's going to do a couple of things that are here simply to set the stage for what we're going to do now guys I want y'all to listen to me many of you consider me the general of this army if you do fine whatever you want to do if you want to call me the general if you want to make me the leader of this army, fine, fine. Today, I'm going to ask you to let me lead. This is a day of decision. This is a day when we must do what's got to be done to save this country. And folks, I want you to know, Everything I do, everything we do with this program, and I hope everything y'all do in trying to help me get the treatment and stuff that I have to have, all of that. I hope we are in unison on one thing. It's not about me. It's not about you. It's about our country. And what we do this day is about saving this country for our children and our grandchildren. There can be no higher calling for that than saving the country for our children and grandchildren. Now, Carol, if you're out there, call in or Alden, if she's called in, please pass her through. God gave us, we've talked about, I'm sorry. All right, Carol, if you're out there, call. God gave us a specific command for a time just like this. Specific command. Here's what you do. We've talked about it before. I don't know why Carol's having trouble getting in, but Carol, if you're listening, call in. Um. She's a little late. Sometimes she gets jammed up. But we were given a specific command. And we're going to do it. We're going to do it now, today. And I asked her to call in. 
Oh, okay. Thank God you're there. I was dancing about all I could dance. All right, Carol, I want you to read, give the, for folks, I want you to write this down, give the scripture, you know, the thing yeah. in the verse. What is yeah. it? Well, the first one you had me uh, reading to, the first one is the Second Chronicles four, uh, 7, 14. And that says, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and will forgive their sin and will heal their land. And you want to all right. forgive. Now, wait a minute. Folks, I don't think all of you were listening. Now, I want you all get close to that computer or that radio. Everything in your world and mine and our children and our grandchildren, everything having to do with the future of this nation rests on the word she's trying to read. So I want you, please, get close to it, and I want you to hear it. Now read it again, Carol. Okay, and the operative word is if. If my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven, and forgive their sin, and will heal their land. And then you wanted me to do 15, the following verses, now mine eyes shall be open, and my ears open, and attentive unto the prayer that is made from this place. Now what that says in layman language, because I certainly ain't no preacher, what he said in that verse 15, if we do that now, now his eyes will be open. Yeah. He'll hear us. Yes. He will hear us. Yes. Now, do y'all understand the significance of the specificity to which God commanded us to do these things? And do you not agree, all of you? I hope you agree that we're at a time that we must save this land. We must. Now, there's another thing I wanted her to read. Another thing. Which is uh, Proverbs um, 8, chapter 8, verse 13. To now, hear the these are the... Th in a second, Carol. These are the things God hates. Hates. Okay. Mm -hmm. Read them, Carol. Okay. Uh, and to fear the Lord is to hate evil. And he, and he said, then he said, I hate pride and arrogance, evil behavior, and perverse speech. Well, there were more than that. Because no, I just you had them read, read you, to me. But you, you didn't read my text. That's why. You, I read your text, but I had just okay. had them. There was like six or seven that were read to me, haughty, something or other. Anyway, folks, there are things God hates. Pride. Pride. Number he one. hates pride. What's the second one, Carol? He hates pride and he hates arrogance. Mm -hmm. What's the next one? Evil behavior. Hates and evil it, behavior. Yeah. And perverse speech. And perverse speech. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Now, I think what I was talking about was Proverbs 6. Have you got 6 handy? Yeah. Turn to Can it. You read it. Yeah, well, read it. Well, the Proverbs 6, but do you know what verses? Yeah, just them verses, whatever verse. Anyway, never mind. That, that'll work. That'll work. Carol, thank you, folks. Now, the reason I asked Carol to do this, you still there, Carol? Yeah, I am. I was. Go ahead. I'll hang up. No, don't hang up yet. Okay. There's a okay. reason I asked Carol to, number one, do these two things, folks. The first thing was about us. The first thing was about us. What we are to do. What we are to do. You got it? What we are to do. But the second thing I ask her to read 
had to do with something that's been bothering me. Oh, I just got a text. It was Proverbs 6, 6, or 6. No, it's 616. It's Proverbs 616, the six things that I hate. Oh, okay. What are they? Read those, please, just real quick. These are six things that the Lord hates. Seven are detestable to him. One, haughty eyes, lying tongue, hands that shed innocent blood, a heart that devises wicked schemes, feet that are quick to rush into evil, a false witness who pours out lies, and a man who stirs up dissension among brothers. All right. Those things, folks, apply to all of us, do they not, Carol? Yeah. Especially me. I'm afraid I was in there on most of those. Well. Not to be, but I'm in there on most of them. And And if I'm not right now, I have been. Yeah. Uh But there's another person that that fits almost like a glove. Yeah. And this is the mistake that I feel I have made. You know, guys, I have told you all over and over and over again that our only chance was Donald Trump. Our only chance was Donald Trump. To back this up, I'm going to tell you a few things. I told Donald Trump, y'all told Donald Trump, we told Donald Trump, we told him to listen to this program. As a matter of fact, somebody from his organization's listening, I understand, to this show today. Good. You need to hear this. I told this 7,400 people, I told them Trump was our only chance. I never said, y'all know, I've never said Trump was perfect. I never said he was all this greatness and everything, but I did say he was better than the rest. He was better than what we had as a choice. And then I kept thinking about all weekend, something wasn't adding up. And it wasn't adding up in my life. My life is the life that's exemplary of all the things God hates, and I know it. But something wasn't adding up. And Carol, here I am trying to get us to basically believe in Donald Trump when, to be honest, he's arrogant. He is. He is. Arrogant. Mm -hmm. In almost everything that was read there in that, he too is guilty of, and I'm not saying any of us are any better. I'm just saying he too falls into that. And then I kept thinking about something Donald Trump said. And Carol and I talked about this. Something Donald Trump said. When he was asked by a reporter, Carol, Carol, tell him about that story about he was asked about sinning. Oh, yeah, he was being interviewed and I won't tell you who I think it is. I mean, I, I, but anyway, he was interviewed by one of the, one of the men that we see, uh, Shepard Smith or, or one of those. And so Shepard was, the, 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 yeah, excuse me, the specific reason for that interview was to find out where Trump's coming from spiritually. And so in one of the questions, and many of you probably uh, saw that interview, but he asked him, he said, well, okay, now what about, you know, what about church? Oh, well, no, I, you know, he belongs to the Presbyterian. He's a Presbyterian, and, and he belongs to a Presbyterian church. And, well, do you attend? Well, yes. Well, yes, yes, I sure do. I, I go, yeah. Okay, and um, so then he asked him about sinning, and he said, well, you know, do you consider yourself a sinner? Well, no, he didn't really think he was a sinner. And, he, you know, and then the next thing asked that promoted the, answer to be, well, no, I mean, I didn't have to ever ask for forgiveness because I don't have to ask for forgiveness because, uh, I'm a good person. I mean, I, I'm a good person. I don't, you know, and I just sat there guys and I just went, Whoa, Donald, Whoa, Donald. 
All right. Carol, thank you. Okay. Uh, because he said, well, just I want to add, Larry, I wish mm -hmm. I could have been there. I wish I could have been there in that interview and said, Donald, you know what the Lord says about you? <laughs> he says, you are as filthy rags to him. Without and, you know, we him. hear, Carol, we hear Trump all the time say, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire, I'm a billionaire. Yes. Now, folks, folks, I'm not knocking Donald Trump. I'm just telling it like. I've been worried about. He yes. says, I've been a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. I'm a billionaire. Yes. And, and not being good on verse and scripture like y'all know I'm not, because I'm not a good Christian. I try to be, but I ain't. But something kept bugging me and asked you about what was that quotation, Carol? About, about, about the camel. Oh, yeah, going through the eye of a needle. Yeah. It's easier for a camel to go through an eye of a needle than a rich man to enter the kingdom of heaven. Yeah. Now, I know. Thank you, Carol. You can uh -huh. Get off okay. now. You're off the hot okay. seat. Okay. <laughs> Thank okay. you. And I'm sorry I put you in it. But, awesome. folks, I'm, I'm, all right, I'm telling you all these things, and you're all sitting there shaking your head wondering what in the hell is going on. What are you talking about, Larry? Let me tell you. There was another story in the Bible. I'm going to get this one out of the way, and then I'll be done with my preachy stuff. There was another story in the Bible. I thought it was, what? Somebody was saying something. Yeah, Douglas, hold on. No calls just yet, buddy. No calls yet. Just stay in there. I'll get to you in a minute, son. Hang on. You're all right, Douglas. Just hang on. There was another thing, and I thought it was Jericho fighting the battle of the wall, you know, blowing it down with the horns and stuff. Well, it wasn't. It was Gideon. And Gideon was fixing to fight a battle. And Gideon formed up this big old army. And then God told him, we'll get rid of that. You don't need that many people. And Gideon was kind of worried about it. And he said, get rid of them. Of course, Gideon said, well, how do I know which one to pick? And he told him the ones that go down to the water, tell them to go to the water. And the ones that drink out of the water, like laughing it up like a dog, get rid of them. The ones that cup it up in their hand and drink it, you keep them. And he took his thousands of people, however many there were, and got them down to like 300 up against a massive enemy. That story bothered me because that's us. That's us. I've been trying to grow this massive, massive army, massive army, when in fact, what we have, I have told you, will be enough. But we're going to have to do something. You and I, all of you, we're going to have to do something. First off, we've got to look inward at ourselves. None of us are clean. None of us. Me, dirtier than most of you. I'm probably dirtier than Trump. But at least we got to know we're not clean. And what I've been asking y'all to do has been wrong, which is why we keep getting our teeth knocked in. You know, I told you. Trump, I told you when I found out from sources that Trump was the, the new trick they were going to start playing. If y'all will recall, I said they're going to start trying to block Trump from speaking at these different venues because the communities are going to claim, gosh, we'd love to have you speak, but we can't let you speak because we don't have the money to pay for security. That happened in Irving, Texas and a couple of other places already. That's already happened. Then I have told y'all over and over and over. Trump, that the RNC ain't going to let Trump be the nominee. Well, all we've heard is Trump's the presumptive nominee, the presumptive nominee. Then it comes out this weekend that guess what? Some of these delegates, they're being hoarded up, put together, and they're going to try to block Trump from getting the, comp, the, you know, the guaranteed votes on the first ballot. Now, there was something that I said over and over and over. I said, about the rules. There ain't no rules until the rules committee meets six days before the event, before the, before the convention. Do y'all remember me saying that? I did over and over. Well, with all this fervor about this trying to block Trump from getting the, the, the delegate count, 
one of the guys in charge of the delegate thing said, look, about the rules. Somebody said, well, the rules are that he's got it. And he, the guy told him these words were said on Fox News and on MSNBC. There are no rules until six days before the convention. There are no rules. Then the RNC, one of the leaders of the RNC put out this little tweet saying, oh, this thing about them trying to block Trump from getting the nomination, that's not real. But what they said in that tweet was significant. It said there is no organized, no organized movement to block Trump or stop him from getting the nomination. Then there was some other stuff, but that was the key thing. Well, then all day today, you've heard about that woman who is leading this group. It's about 100, maybe 200 delegates that they're getting together and they're trying to fix it so that their first vote, which they're supposed to be locked in to voting for Trump, they're fixing it to where they don't have to vote for Trump in the first ballot. So, folks, I can't tell any more what's coming than what has come and more is coming still. But it's like Trump don't listen. And then I get to think, well, the reason he don't listen is because he's sitting there claiming he's a billionaire and he's smart. He is smart. He is a billionaire and he's made lots of money. I haven't. But it don't mean I don't know this stuff. But if you take how Donald Trump is running and the things he's saying, guys, it's just going against the grain. It is. It's going against the grain. All right. You got it, guys. It's just going against the grain of the things we're not supposed to do, the things that God hates. And then for us, we need to, it's time. I told you the first call we're going to make as an army is we're going to call and we're going to say that prayer. We're going to say that prayer and we're going to ask God to heal our land. Now, I want later in the program, Greg Martin's going to call in because I'm not worthy. I don't do praying real well. So I've asked Greg to call in. But as we do tonight, today's program, I want y'all to remember as we get near the end of this program, if you're with us, if you're with us, we're going to say that prayer together. And I ain't no preachy kind of guy. This program's about as uncomfortable for me as it is a long tail cat in a room full of rocking chairs. I'm telling you, this ain't easy for me to do. This ain't my way of doing things. And then the other thing that we're going to do going into today's program, we're going to remember Gideon. Remember Gideon. You see, the moral of the story of Gideon, it wasn't the size of his army numerically. It was his faith. You had to believe. You had to believe in God. And if you believed in God, it wasn't the 300 versus the thousands. The point I get out of the story was, the point is that the numbers were not relevant. It was to make sure Gideon had faith. And folks, either we have faith in God or we're not going to save this land. We're not. We're not going to save it. Now, I'm skipping a commercial. Today, I've got to raise 400 today. $400. I'm going to skip the first commercial. You know the drill, all of you. I need your help. You go to PayPal, NicholsLive at AOL.com. Then you can go to Larry Nichols, Conway, Arkansas. There's a button there. If you don't have PayPal, you can use your debit card, credit card, whatever. But before this program is over, I have to have your help. So please ding that PayPal thingy. Now, I want to go to Douglas. Douglas, are you there, my brother? I'm here. How are you today, son? I'm doing good. Uh, yeah, I wanted to come on. Uh, Larry and I talked, I think it was Friday, and 
I've been working a little bit behind the scenes with, uh, you know, the girl that runs his page and we've been talking and because I'm really concerned about the way Larry has to come on. He, he needs these treatments. Um, if you listen to the show, you know that, and he's, uh, having to beg and really he needs to be talking about what he, he does best. And that's, about how to stop Hillary and um, get this nation back on track. And um, folks, it's a tremendous amount of money that he has to come up with. So we've done a little brainstorming and uh, this is what, what we've come up with. And I, you know, I asked Larry if I could just come on and pitch this. And in essence, what we're going to ask is to make a commitment of $25 a month starting on July 1st, which is a Friday coming up in a couple of weeks. And we're going to ask that if we could get 600 of the 7,400 that listen in, uh, obviously we'd love to have more than that, but we could make his expenses for the whole month and he could spend time doing what he does good and not having to beg for the money, but he has to do it because he can't, he he goes downhill fast when he doesn't have his treatments, and that's just the bottom line. So I'm asking for twenty five dollars. You'll pay it the same way that you're paying. You know, if you've donated before through the PayPal, uh, Nichols Nichols Live at AOL dot com on the first of the month, twenty five dollars, and to try to keep track. Um, or, you know, get a database going of people that are commit that will commit to this. We've set up a, uh, email, Larry's, Larry Nichols, donate at gmail.com. That's Larry Nichols, donate at gmail.com. And we'll keep a database. We're not going to hassle anybody, you know, who pays, who doesn't pay. We're, we're hoping this is an honor system thing, but, we'll be able to send out emails to you to keep you updated on what's come in and how that progress is going. And just to give us an idea if this will actually work in the meantime, though, in these next couple of weeks, he's still going to need the help daily. So, um, we're, you know, it's going to be a little struggle, but starting on July 1st, we're hoping we can, uh, rally the troops. Now, $25 isn't a lot of money. I'm just going to throw a couple ideas out there, things that you can do uh, that I've come up with. Uh, one is uh, look around your house. There are things that you got, I guarantee you, you could take them to your local pawn shop and get $25 for. Uh, tools, you know, saw, electric saws, uh, golf clubs, uh, musical instruments that you don't play anymore. I, I don't know what, but look around, get creative here. That's what we're <laughs> going to have to do is just get creative. And another idea is, is have a yard sale. Uh, I haven't ever had a yard sale where I didn't make at least four or $500. Um, have a yard sale and, you know, put that money away so you can make, you know, help every month, $25 on the first of the month. And, we believe this will help Larry have the money he needs for his treatments for the month. So he can spend time talking about what you want to hear, and what I want to hear. Uh, I just believe it can happen. Um, so we're, we're going to try it. I'd ask you to sign up at that email again. It's Larry Nichols donate at gmail.com. $25. Douglas. Thank you. Douglas. Yes, Another thing, folks, Douglas has worked hard to come up with this, and it would be so grand, Douglas. It would just be incredible if I just could stop it and just stop talking about it. If, if this would work, it would be the godsend for me and for us because we've obviously yeah. got a battle. This yeah, and that's the, yeah, and that, and that's kind of the whole point of it, you know, because I've just been real concerned for you, and I can hear it in your voice, and uh, you know, I uh, I talk with your admin occasionally through messages, and 
you know, she's concerned for you and your health. And I just think, uh, stress is not good when you're, when you're battling, uh, you know, something like cancer. And, uh, I, I really am pleading with, with your listeners to think about this. We're going to post the email address where you can sign up. And it, basically all I want you to say is I'm in, you know, something like that. Well, let me so just, let me just read. Douglas, let me read you. This came in from Carla. By the way, Carla sent $5 today. She's the first one to ding the PayPal dingy thing. Okay. Here's what she said. I'm just reading it straight off the text. Larry, it's your heart and your true self that makes a difference regarding God and your content of today's show. She said, I can, after you came on, she said, I can commit to $25 a week for you. And it means a month, Carla, not a week. Bless your heart. Yeah. Yeah, I'll be and then mine, she yeah, said, for the month. Then, that's right. Then she said they can give up the Red Bull and Starbucks. That's five dollars each time. And then the next <laughs> sentence, I'm gonna. She said, "Hey, anyway, something you can back up your general, Carl. I'm not gonna read that part, but anyway, yeah. So yeah, Carla's I, in. I we got one. Go on. I'm that's sorry." Awesome. Yeah, that's awesome, and I want to reiterate what Larry said. This I, we're just talking for the month. Uh, if this works, uh, you know, obviously if it doesn't, he's still going to need to ask for help. But um, I think it can, and I think 600 people at $25 uh, can do it. And like I said, if you need to get creative, well, you know, just go visit your local pawn shop. Look around in there, and you'll see the kind of items that, that, that you know, games right. uh gaming systems electronic things uh bicycles f- tools especially like you know for construction work uh power saws they take all that kind of stuff and all right, i'm Douglas, just saying get, get, get you, creative <laughs> right, uh, we, we love you larry and uh so we're we're trying to help and uh you know we'll put we'll put it up on your page later all right give that address one more time that email thingy yeah, the email is Larry Nichols donate at gmail dot com. All right. All right, Doug, you'll make, thank you. You'll make your you'll make your donation just like you if you've been donating at the uh Nichols Live uh at AOL dot com through PayPal. So Yeah, you know, and Carla change. By the way, Carla said she will commit to twenty five a week, not a month, a week. Thank okay. You, you well, can do that if you like. If somebody would like, that would sure be helpful. Yeah. All right, Doug. And, and, thank and the you. thing is, it would help him have a buffer. Uh, if you can give more, obviously, but I know there's a lot of people that struggle, you know, but $25 you could come up with. I guarantee you just got to get creative and how you think about things you're doing and the things that you have that maybe you could sell to get rid of. Um, all right, that's my all. Friend, but, <laughs> all right, thank you, Doug, because I've got to get back to the program today because right, it's important. Yep. Thank you. Yep. And Douglas is a good friend, as many of you are. Carla, Mary Ellen, all. Bob, I mean, gosh, the name, the list goes on and on and on. But here's where we are. What the purpose of this program today that seems so bizarre? Let me tell you, the mistake I have made the mistake I've been making is I've been throwing everything in the hands of Donald Trump in his hands. And that's wrong. That is wrong. I don't, I don't know what Trump's going to do today. He got rid of that Lewandowski guy. I don't know if that's good, bad, indifferent. I don't know. But I promise you this, folks, if we're sitting here betting our country on Donald Trump, we've made a huge, huge error, a big mistake. I don't know that Donald Trump's got enough sense, although he's brilliant. I don't know that he's got enough sense to realize that he's being set up by the RNC. What are we going to do? What are we going to do if in just a few more weeks they had that meeting six days before the convention? And these people that are not doing an organized movement to block Trump from getting the nomination actually go in six days before the event and block the nomination. Oh, you're going to hear Rince Priebus and all those creeps there are going to say, well, 
We didn't do it. That's the prerogative of the rules committee. What are we going to do? We're going to lay down. We're going to just roll over and die. Is that what we're going to do? I don't think so. I don't think so. What we're going to do is we're going to fight. And, you know, maybe Trump don't listen. You know, maybe Trump's too smart to listen to me and to us. Maybe he is. I know his people got a little quick, to, you know, because all of y'all called him and said, hey, you need to talk to Larry Nichols. Well, he don't think he does. That's fine. That's fine. But I'll tell you this. I will say this. It's a pretty stupid man that doesn't think he needs to talk to the only person breathing and walking in this land today that got a lick in on Bill Clinton and led the way to getting him impeached. The only person that even Bill Clinton acknowledged had the stuff to beat Hillary. Think about it. If you're that damn dumb, I don't think Abe wants you as president. Now, all being, I don't want Hillary. But I'll tell you guys, I don't want Jeb Bush. I'll tell you, I don't want John McCain. I'll tell you, I don't want Mitt Romney. I'll tell you, I don't want Paul Ryan. I don't want to be forced to have to put up with the same crap we've had to be putting up with for all these years that's got us in this mess. We are a lost nation, a lost nation. And I hear today when I think Trump don't hear us, when I think Trump don't pay any attention to us, which frustrates me, not about me. It frustrates me that he don't listen to you. You. But then the day I hear on Joe Scarborough, morning with Joe or whatever that is on MSNBC, said Trump being the stupid man he is, and st instead of rescinding his thing, saying the Syrian Muslims ought to be, you know, they ought to stop that until they get a system to vet them, instead of saying he rescinds that and doesn't want to do that anymore, Scarborough said he, said he doubled down on it, and now he's wanting to uh, make them register. Well, that's from our playbook, yours and mine. Let's make every Muslim register. Then I hear today, Loretta Lynch, the attorney general, when they released the 9-11 tapes from the shooter that was killing 49 people, wounding 53 others, when he called 911, she edited it so that, you know what, we didn't hear him claim he was a part of ISIS or that he was loyal to ISIS or he supported ISIS or he did it in the name of ISIS or he did it in the name of the Hamas and the other organizations that hate us, that are fundamentalist Muslim country, I mean, people. And, you know, I would say to Donald Trump, stand up, stand up on stage and when they tell you radical Islam, when they tell you Islam is such a peace, love, dope religion, stand up there and demand that all these lovely mohair Muslims stand up there and say, show us the Quran. And either it's in the Quran, which is their version of a Bible, it's either in the Quran that it tells them to convert or kill infidels, or it's not. It either is or it isn't. How hard, Trump, is it for you to figure out that all you've got to do is ask all these Muslims, show me the Bible or book that you study for your religion. And if it don't ever mention kill infidels, then hey, your peace love dopers. But if it does, the American people need to be made aware. They're not going to listen to me, folks. They're not going to listen to you. The only chance we have to get the people in America, and I'm not talking about the 2% that pay attention to politics. I'm talking about the 98% of the people in this country that don't watch 24-hour news. The only chance we have to make those people aware 
of the true foundational principles of Islam, not the ones our Creek president, the mohair black guy named Obama. I'm not talking about that. Not the one our black attorney general that says she'll prosecute anybody that talks bad about Islam. Not the Islam they talk about. Talk about the true one. Talk about the real one. Talk about the Islam that wants to kill our grandbabies and our children. Talk about it. Let those eye moms that tell you, boy, we don't talk about bad stuff here. Ooh, no, we're just peace, love, dope. Except the guy that killed 49 people comes from that eye mom's mo mo uh, mosque. And then the guy that goes over into wherever in the Middle East and blows up people, he came from that mosque. Then you got the Wisconsin mosque, which all those radicalized creeps come from. But boy, they don't talk about about me in that mosque. No, sir. And then Trump to dare say, which is out of our playbook, dare say that the mosque ought to be monitored. Well, that's weird, isn't it? That's where they get radicalized. If you're trying to stop homegrown terrorists, you dumbasses. Loretta Lynch, FBI. If you're trying to stop homegrown terrorism, go to the mosque where they learn that crap. Do it. It really takes a genius to figure it out. Really. And then Trump, if you or your people are listening to me today, you better hear this. You better listen up tight. If, if the RNC tricks you, you get yourself tricked because you're so damn smart that you walk right into it. Hey, you know what happens? You're going to huff and puff and talk all tough and say, you know what? Well, if they do that to me, I'll just run without the RNC. I'll run third party. You do that, you lose, and we get Hillary. And then when our children lose, we lose our country, Trump. We lose our country, Trump. And you run around with this haughty attitude. Like you ain't got no sin you got to worry about. We're just going, just go on doing things God hates. And I just don't think God's going to be right there blessing you. No more than he blesses me or anybody else. Repent. Straighten up. But see, he's so arrogant. Hey, the RNC stabs him in the back. He'll just run. Without him. How's he going to do that? How? And then, even if the RNC don't screw him, then he's not worried about the RNC or them getting together, the, the Bushes and the McCains and the Lindsey Grahams and that ilk and the Mitt Romneys. He doesn't care. He's not worried that they form up somebody to run as a third party. I am. I'm scared to death of it. Because Trump, it destroys our country for my grandbabies and all of these people out here. Yeah, I'm worried about it. I'm worried about it a lot. And I've had about all of this bravado junk from him that I can take in 10 lifetimes. 10 lifetimes. Marlene sent 35. Thank you, Marlene. We're uh, we're about 350 away from what I got to have. Thank you, Marlene. And we got what looks like 15, 16 minutes to get it. Do you hear me, y'all? Do you understand what I'm saying? This is our 7,400 approximately souls coming to Jesus' day. Greg Martin, I want you to call in. I made the decision you need to do it because I don't think you want to hear what I got to say in a prayer. Now, folks, listen to me. We're going to have to stand together, 7,400 strong, and you got to remember Gideon. 
Remember Gideon. Now, when you count, when you count, now remember when you count our YouTube stuffs, and then when you count all the stuff that's done on Leading Edge Radio, we're well over 10,000. And 10,000 is a plenty. But you know what? 10,000 ain't anywhere near enough. A million ain't enough if we don't have our head on straight, and if we don't make our, all right, if we don't make ourselves understand the truth, Gideon, that story is about faith. Faith. Either we have the faith that if we will do exactly what God asked us to do when he gave us the things that he said, and I'll, sa I'll save your land. He didn't stutter. He told us exactly what we must do. And by God, we're going to do it. We are going to do it. And we're going to do it here today. We are. Now, Greg, wait a minute. Let me see what I got here. Uh, it says, this is from, oh, this is from Ms. Carla. She said, thank you, Doug. And it says, Larry mentioned this one. Bring up what other charities do people donate to, would rather donate to my general who I know than another charity where their big heads get the dollars. I didn't get that one, Carla, forgive me. I think what she was saying that, you know, compare this maybe to some other charities and folks, I, I don't like doing that because that's not right for me to beg versus some other charity. I just don't like doing that. I don't think that's right for me to do. She said, just restructure and reorganize what you're giving and, and, and change the outcome that way. Just help if you can. We're, you know, we're still 350 away and we've got 13 minutes to get it. And I don't know what to do. Now with that, Greg, you're here. Greg Martin, folks. Larry, Greg, thank you, you for having me on. And I will make this very brief. Uh, I will say a couple of words before we pray. Um, God will make the way where there seems to be no way. We've seen him do that time and time again with finances, with your treatments, and that's the kind of faith that we need to have. Uh, Larry, I love what you said about repenting. It is the word of the day. We have to do it. The other thing, too, folks, is please do not pay attention to these polls that are being presented. Larry said this many, many times. Most of the polls are lies. They are designed to turn your attention away. Keep your eyes on Jesus. Keep listening to Larry. Above all, listen to God. God knows that the enemy is purposely trying to destroy America. Now, that is a physical enemy, and that is the spiritual enemy. God is not going to allow this, and he knows who they are. So I I'm agree. Simply Greg, okay. before you say the prayer, now, folks, I want all you to listen to me. You're going to be in this army. You get them damn heads bowed. You hear me? You bow. Your head. You ain't got to get on your knee. Some of us, we can't get on our knee and get back up. But you bow them heads. And join with Greg, because this is the prayer. This is our first call as an army we're making to save this nation. Go ahead, Greg. Very good. Larry, uh, before I start that prayer, I want you to know, and I've told you before, that we have uh, strong, strong evidence uh, that the Russian Federation listens into to the show daily. They don't listen long, but they do hear. They hear the word of the Lord, and, you know, God's word promises it will never return void. So we're going to pray right now, and we're just simply going to ask in whatever number of people that are listening, uh, just Give your heart to God right now. Oh, God, we ask you to heal our land. We come to you in repentance, as we discussed in Chronicles, uh, 2 Chronicles 7.14. We ask you to give us the numbers of the people that we need, like Gideon, uh, that few will be many. And we ask you, oh God, to give us the faith to believe that you will do these great things and while we pray for Mr. Trump, we pray for him to literally have a come-to-Jesus meeting and that he would realize that all have sinned 
and come short of the glory of God, that you would strengthen him, encourage him, use him as you are strengthening and encouraging and using all of us, Larry, uh, even more so because of the condition that he's in, and that you would help this nation and that you would continue to call us to faith and prayer to stand for this nation. And we pray all of these things in the matchless name of Jesus and all who agree and all who know Jesus as Lord and Savior said, Amen. And if you don't know Jesus as Lord and Savior, it's a great time to, to do that. Just ask him into your heart now. And join with Larry. Join this army. Because you know what, folks? Jesus is coming back. And when he comes back, he's going to ask you one thing. It wasn't how much money you stacked up in your bank account. It wasn't uh, what you uh, did. It was what did you do for Jesus? We ask you, oh God, to move in a mighty way today that this prayer that's being heard in unison around the world, uh, that something would change in the hearts of all of us as listeners and believers and some non-believers alike, and above all, that it would change the heart of who we believe will be the next president of the United States, Donald J. Trump. But Lord, you've got to You've got to help us do our part, and we know that you'll do your part in Jesus' name. Thank you, Larry, for having me on. You bet. Amen. Good job. Now, I will say this little addendum to that prayer. Trump, get off your ass. Get off of it now. You get smart and go to the true person that can help this campaign. Recognize him, buddy. Do it. All right, folks. Today's show I know was weird. I know it. But let's not forget one thing. When you're going into war, the first thing you're always going to do is you're going to look at your assets. You're going to look at everything you got. You're going to count your soldiers. You're going to count your weapons. You're going to count your ammunition. You're going to look at your strategy over and over and over and over. And that's what we're doing. And the main thing is we're going to recognize an asset that we have if we choose to recognize it and if we will use it. And that is to believe. And I hope that some of you out there are tough and rough and talking about God ain't easy. It ain't easy for me. It's not. But we're just about stripped down to where we've got no choice. We've got to ask for his help. I have to ask for his help. And I don't mean for me in my sickness. I'm talking about I ask for his help. I do. Help us save this land. Save this land. That's all I have to leave to my grandbabies. That's all I have. And in truth, that's all you have. That's it. It's not about money. It's not about what, what good is it to leave your grandchildren or your children millions of dollars in money if there's no country left? What good is it? What good is it to gather up all your money in a bank only to have the banks go in and nationalize and repatriate your money and take it from you? What good is it then? What will you have accomplished when the government comes in and claims your money? Huh? What good is it? And by the way, what the hell good is the United States of America if it can no longer claim, claim to be founded on the principle of Christianity? Now, later on, they said Judeo-Christianity, but it was Christianity in the beginning. That's what it's got to be now. Christianity now I ain't against the Jews. I'm just saying. But I'll tell you one thing that we can never let happen in this country. We can never let the Muslims come in with this false, ridiculous, hateful, evil religion called Islam and let it reign supreme in America because truly we will then be dead and our souls will wander 
for eternity. For eternity. And folks, please. Please realize. This is not a game. And you better realize that I wouldn't be getting on my knees and begging to God Almighty. Not me. I'm used to doing it myself. You got to know I wouldn't be like this unless I was scared. Scared blind. Scared. Because I see a day when we've lost this country. And I see a day very soon, possibly for me, a day where I've got to stand before the Lord. And he's got to, he's going to ask me, I fear, what did you do to save this country? And I know I could tell him, well, I talked good words and I gathered up 7,400, 10,000, 100,000. I gathered a whole bunch of people to listen to me and I did all this. Thing. Huh? What? All right. Just a second. You know, I know I could tell him all that stuff, but you know what? I'm afraid he would get me at the end and he'd say, well, you did real good, but did you get him to understand they needed to believe in me? And I ain't going to make that mistake. We got a caller right quick. Caller, are you there? Yes, Larry. Uh, I'm glad to, to, to speak with you again today. I just wanted to say what you're talking about now, I think, is absolutely exactly on point. We've got to get deeply into understanding who Zuma Abedin is and understand that she's connected through her family to radical Islam, which is just the antithesis of the American idea and Christianity. And my, my, my thought for you is anything that you can possibly do based on your previous Clinton machine experience to try to get to the kernel of Zuma Abedin and get all that out there, I think would make a big uh, political difference right now, especially given the events in Orlando. Oh, I agree. And just know I will. It'll be its time. And when it's time, it will come. I promise you that. Let Hillary get the nomination. Let the Republicans pick whoever they're going to pick. And let's look how the, the field lays out. And then I promise you I'll be there. And she will well, be a big topic of discussion, my friend. That's very, that's very, very encouraging. Well, thank you very much, then. Thank you. All right, yeah. folks, we're down to three minutes, and we're, uh, let me look, let me look, but I think, um, I think we're about, hold on, I've done something here, and I can't get it to work. Yeah, we're about 350 short for today. I don't need to tell you one hour from now. I've got to tell them whether I'm going to get it or I'm not. Tell them I'm going to get it or not. Just, um, folks, please. Stand up. Stand up. Stand up and fight. Got this from a listener. Thank you for today. Best program yet. Telling the truth about Douglas's arrogant Donald's. I'm sorry, I didn't mean Douglas. Donald's arrogance and haughtiness. Without God, Donald won't win. Still think martial law is going to keep is going to stop the election, and it very well may be. Very well may be. All right, folks. I'm out of it. I got this from Miss Carla. Love you. Last remark. Thank you, Miss Carla. Thank you for your help. Good Lord willing, forget the 350. I'll see you tomorrow. Some Until then. Over the rainbow. Way up high. There's a land that I've heard